welcome to my allotment. Today is a very rainy day, so I am gonna sow some seeds. And I'm gonna show you what I'm sowing now towards the end of July. And I am sitting in my greenhouse because it's just too wet to film outside. So I hope the rain on the glass isn't too loud. I don't think it should be. And um, I hope I don't get too many drips on me. <laughs> uh, right. If you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe. I upload three videos a week. And if you like this one, don't hesitate. Give it a thumbs up. So I am going to sow some chard and some beetroot. I'm going to sow some herbs. And I'm also going to sow this um, uh, tagetes in Swedish, well, sorry, me Mexican marigold it's called, or tagetes minuta. So I got a tip of this on this uh, on Instagram because I have a lot of bindweed and apparently this is a plant that has roots that kill perennial weeds including ground elder and cooch grass but it's so I'm gonna give it a go right because I've got a lot of um, bindweed but and cooch grass uh, but it is a ginormous plant It's 1.8 meters or six foot tall and from the picture we might not have any flowers, <laughs> so it's not going to be a looker. Well, it even says here, uh, an extraordinary plant that isn't a looker. But I'm going to give it a go. It is not the time to sow this, really. It should have been done by May. But, you know, there's like 500 seeds in here, so I thought I'd just give it a go, like most things. And then I'm also going to sow some turnips and some winter radish. All right, let's get into it. So most of these I'm going to multi sow. I'm going to do probably four of each of the chard and the beetroot. So I'll start with some chard. The ones I sowed earlier this year have just taken off now. We don't eat a lot of chard but it's good to have just in case for when you want it, you know. I don't really like it as a salad. That's just my opinion. I don't mind um, small beetroot leaves, but small chard leaves. I just if I can if I can have beetroot leaves, like why would I choose chard? <laughs> um, but I do like it sometimes when you cook. It can be good. Oh, just drop that one. All right. So this is Bright Lights, is that colorful chart that everyone loves to photograph. But it's also, you know, it grows really well. So, you know, why not? Right, let's label that up. So today in the rain, uh, me and my partner took our, what is she now? 20 month old, told her to a petting zoo. It's the first one we've uh, been to with her. She loves animals, so maybe we should have done it sooner. But you're big with lockdown, like we haven't really done anything away from just really close. She's back at nursery, and she loves that. But before then, we like didn't do anything. So she's kind of a bit timid with new things. I mean, all kids are but because she's been so sheltered I guess all kids have been so sheltered now it would be really important to get them out and about again get them used to people because there was a, um, a while there during lockdown when as soon as you saw a stranger out on your, your walk or whatever like I picked her up and stepped several meters away and then <laughs> It feels like that would have it would have scarred many children, maybe older ones, more than her age, of course. Uh, but if it continued any longer, yeah, it's a whole different world. And I heard uh, other people say that. Oh, I didn't label that, but I label that. So that was uh, beetroot cylindra. It's very. Um, 
very pigmented and it has this it's a nice shape to it as well it's great and it's really sweet so i like it i like it a lot it's really 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 pink um cylindra but yeah i've ha heard other people their kids you know uh observing that oh there's too many people there we can't go there you know it's really has had a huge effect i just hope um we can ever sometime get back to normal you know or is this <laughs> is this the new normal yeah i mean they've been talking for years that this is this is the major threat to our way of life a big pandemic like this and you know it has had still has a huge huge effect on the economy and everything so we still don't really know what the fallout will be <clears throat> i guess that depends on this is just bolt hardy normal round beetroot but it's a uh, resistant to bolting um yeah we'll we'll, we'll still see what happens um, what the effects will be but the good thing is now as opposed to when the Spanish influenza went around is that we have modern um, modern healthcare you know they've already come up with lots of ways to stop people progressing into needing a ventilator and all sorts of stuff so it's great it really is amazing what they've done the the healthcare the researchers so fine, i think and hopefully this vaccine will not just be safe but it will also be effective and uh, fun fact that's actually being developed uh, close to where I work at the Oxford University and I have some colleagues who have actually participated in the trial for it so everyone's chipping in right so that was the candy stripe one I love that one it's great I mean, I love all beetroot, and uh, <laughs> and I've been sowing. This is fourth fourth sowing of beetroot. Uh, so this is this is a tondo di Giorgia. I apologize for the butchering of the Italian. And the last one is. Touchstone gold beetroot. So they're yellow. So, so my toddler loves beetroot, which is part of the reason why I grow so much of it. But she doesn't like the yellow one because I guess in her mind that's not beetroot. They're funny how they're so particular about things need to look a certain way. Um, I guess they're finding order in the world around them, maybe. But yes, the petting zoo. So they had the usual, the sheep and the goats and the everything. And um, she was obviously too scared to feed them. Um, but that's all right. She'll get braver. Um, but she loved doing all the animal noises and everything. And they also had uh, reindeer and... Um, what are they called? They're not called. Uh, they're not called kangaroos. They're they're the smaller ones. <laughs> I can't remember now. Touchstone gold. All right then. So I'll just spread some compost over these seeds, a bit thinly. So this is just general compost uh, mixed with some of my own compost. I usually mix in vermiculite. But I'd run out. I need to remember to place an order for more. Mm. 
it. We'll just firm it down. All right, so next up. Shall we do the turnips? Maybe. So we'll start with the, the winter radish. Huge cooking radish. Grows to almost tennis ball size. So this is organic uh, black round winter squash. I've never grown it before. So, let's see? Yep. Yeah. You can tell that, that radishes are part of the brassica family because the seeds are, you know, similar looking. And they're sort of sent to the, to the same pests. So let's see. Let's do four of these. So I might thin them later on if they're going to be that huge. All right, I'm excited about those. Might sow some more in a bit and get some succession growing. Do I have enough sticks? Well, there's three, there. oh, oh, they might be outside. All right, well, we have enough for these anyway. All right, so we have the Milan Purple Top flat turnip. So I grew them in spring as well. But it was such a dry spring, wasn't it? So, and I, I don't have any water on my allotment, so I'm afraid they suffered a bit. Um, But I got to taste a few. And they're the ones that have like purple on top and then white underneath. Very good for the Instagram. Because <laughs> obviously the only reason I grow things is because they look good on Instagram. No, but um, this was some Milan. Next one is Nave de Nancy, which I think is an other one that's also purple. Yeah, maybe a bit more flattened. Oh, they're both flat. All right. Flattened round, and this one's flattened. Oh well, we'll see. Um, so one of them didn't grow in spring because I planted them in between my um, broad beans. I'd forgotten how big broad beans get. <laughs> um, so they did not get enough of anything like sun, water. Um, so yeah, they. I had to pull them out. They were just tiny little things. So I'll have another go this year. This late now. So that was Nave de Nancy. Turnip. 25th of the 7th. And, and then it's a Milan white 40 days early turnip. So all of these really are for sowing in spring, but I think they'll do well now as well. And uh, yeah, I guess there's a risk that they will um, bolt maybe. But to be honest, there's a risk that they do that in spring as well. So. Hopefully it won't be a sweltering rest of the summer. And by the looks of it, that's not going to be the case. 
Okay, and that was. Milan white turnip. I've realized I grow a lot of Italian veg. As in, they have Italian names. I wonder if that's because um, they love their veg much more than we do here, maybe. Um, they love the variety. So, let's see. So, I think I'm gonna germinate these in the house again. It's just the temperature is so varied in the greenhouse. I just don't feel that confident that is good enough to germinate seeds in. I don't know. I mean, you can just germinate things outside, can't you? But it's about speed for me. I want them up and, you know, going. So then they're ready to be planted when I have space, when space is opening up. Um, and this is why I grow things in modules you know the easier way is just to spread a few seeds in the ground but it's a less efficient use of space i'd say so to me this makes more sense right where are we going to put this one oh all right okay do we have enough sticks that we need one two That's enough. Okay. Oh. Oh. It's an annoying place to film. Right. Let's see. So, what have we got? We've got the marigolds. So I might put a few seeds in. I did that with my, oh, African marigolds as well. <laughs> nice. Um, and then I pulled out the, the multiple germination ones. So you can also grow them to prick out, I guess. Just grow them in a seed tree. Oh yeah, definitely marigolds. They have the same like, I don't know if you can see that, marigold type uh, seeds. So we'll do, shall we do three in each? My last batch of herbs were so slow at germinating. Mm. And I had them outside to germinate, so it just wasn't working for me. I'm just too impatient. I, then I start thinking that they've all failed and then I, that I need to sow more, so I'll put all these in the house. All right, so that is the, where did the pen go? There it is. Mexican marigold. I wonder if it's actually from Mexico. And then we need some parsley. So the first parsley I sowed in spring is still harvesting now. Um, so parsley has a long season. So I'll throw so three of these. And I managed to overwinter some as well. So before these ones were ready, I was harvesting the old ones from over winter. They barely grew anything in the winter months, but then as soon as spring started, they started sh shooting new leaves um, without flowering for quite a long time. And then when they went into flower, 
the other ones were ready. So I think pers parsley is quite an easy one to manage with the um, successional sewing. The other ones here though, um, the coriander and the dill, they're so prone to bolting. And I must remember to sew coriander and dill more often. So I, I already sewed those last month and you know, they're, I'm still waiting for them to come up. Par, parsley. Uh, this is just flat leaf. I've never grown curly. So that's a funny thing. Like most parsley in Sweden is the curly stuff. So that's how I grew up with parsley. I didn't even know that um, there, was, there was flat leaf, I think. Yeah. And it's funny though, a different. Um, this is Coriander Cruiser. different um, cultural preferences in, in food uh, that even affects the plants that you grow. Right, this is going to go everywhere. Yeah, so I really need to sow coriander like once a, once a month, I think, to have a continuous supply because we really like it. We have curry quite often. That we make um, or chili like Mexican food so and we've been eating um, you know corn based chili so chili con corn instead of chili con carne and I don't really like the flavor of the corn uh, or the lack of flavor you get some flavor from the meat I guess and if you have coriander in there, it just helps to make to make it more authentic. I'm finding, I'm, you know, trying to cut down on meat, specifically red meat, uh, and it's been it's quite hard for me. Like, I grew up eating just meat and veg. Ah, oh, oh, dill just smells so nice. For me, it smells like. There's like a crayfish festival in Sweden in August when you fish the crayfish from the um, the inland waters, like certain rivers and lakes, and they even farm them, you know. So I'm just getting so wet. Um, and every year you just, you can buy them in Ikea too. I do that sometimes frozen. And uh, they're cooked, they're boiled, and then you put dill on them as well as uh, like they're cooked in like a salted heavily salted briny water with dill in it so this for me is what this the dill smells like brings back memories and of course you have a lot of uh, vodka with that <laughs> like with any other festival in Sweden it's a lot of shots a lot of aquavit can you imagine that? Drinking lots and lots of vodka while eating <laughs> really salty shellfish. <laughs> oh, a lot of people yeah, be sick just thinking about it. It's lovely though. Right, so that last one was dill. And, uh, yeah, that's the end of that. Yeah. So I think, uh, so I sowed salad in June and they are cropping now and I'm going to sow lettuce again in, um, in early August to take over because the ones that I sowed in June, uh, they're going to rise. To f oh my goodness me, there's two dandelion seeds. How the hell did you get in there that quickly? Yes, uh, they're gonna rise to flower very soon. So, a very, very short cropping season on the summer sowings. Um, but I think if you sow in, in August, it'll keep you going. And then I'm gonna sow again in, I think it's um, September for overwintering. So. Uh, August will include 
like more bolt sensitive things like um, pack toy and uh, rocket and I'm gonna try spinach again because my spring zone spinach just bolted straight away didn't get got like maybe one pick before they bolted so I'm hoping it'll be better sewing now um, but yeah and it's even I think it's a Medina spinach I think that's one that Shaw Sounding recommends um, but yeah, so I'm going to try and overwinter things. I'm going to try overwinter some things outside and I'm going to try have a, have a bit of a sec session in, section in here as well in the greenhouse. But yeah, that's it. Let me know if there's anything that you're sewing that I'm not sewing. <laughs> uh, and then uh, maybe I can add that to my list. The July sewing isn't finished yet, maybe for me. We'll see. See what you can come up with. And uh, yeah, let's see. So I hope you enjoyed this little chatty video. Let me know if it's too much information. <laughs> anyway, that's from me and my seeds. I'll see you next time.